Uh, yeah, so as a vlogging camera, I'm already seeing some huge downfalls. Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick unboxing here of the new GoPro 11 bundle uh, that they're selling. Uh, it comes in a paper-wrapped container and a 32 gig card. Uh, now it's supposed to have a handle and some other stuff, so I presume that's in the box. Uh, SanDisk Extreme 32, don't know if you can see that. Uh, not a very big card by today's standards, but I'm sure it'll fit uh, any others just fine. So let's get into this, shall we? Oh, cool. It has its own case here, it looks like. Excellent. All right, so let's zip it open. Oh, oh, oh. And out she goes. Here, 11 black. And let's see what kind of goodies we have in the zip case. I like the case. It's pretty cool. Your camera must be updated before you can use it. Okay, we'll do that later. Oh, here's the fun stuff. So it's all wrapped up in paper. Let's see if I can get that off without uh, hurting myself. Here we go. Maybe or not. Okay, so big front screen, and it looks like it uses the standard uh, removable uh, face similar to the uh, previous models, which is a nice thing. Uh, we have a harness of some flavor. Let's see what it is. Probably a hat rig. Yep, head rig, hat rig. Okay, and a helmet clip, uh, or like a, uh, I'm sorry, not helmet, a, uh, like a baseball cap, uh, clip. Cool. And then we've got our standard shoes here that come with every GoPro. And this kit comes with two of their fancy new batteries. The, uh, what do they call them? The endurance batteries, something like that. I'm probably getting that name wrong. Uh, but these are supposed to have extended, uh, life and cold weather performance. So cool. Two batteries. Excellent. Whoops. And a selfie stick, hand stick, whatever you want to call it. So it doesn't look like this one is the floaty, uh, but it's got a nice uh, lanyard on it. That's cool. Uh, zip that up around your wrist. And then, of course, down here are going to be the thumb screws and the USB-C cable. Yep. All right. Good enough. Well, uh, this is all cardboard in here, so I'm not Super keen on that uh, as a long-term storage solution. Would have been nice if this were plastic or something to keep it all organized, but uh, for a little eh, TPU uh, kind of a nylon case, that's not too bad. Got a little organizer pocket up here in the top so you can probably put cables and things like that. So that's it. Quick unboxing. I'm gonna light up the camera and update the firmware and start playing with it. Okay, so I finally received all the extra pieces for my helmet vlogging kit uh, to upgrade to the GoPro Hero 11. Uh, I wanted to show a quick comparison on the relative sizes and weights uh, of everything because I'll be upgrading the Ulanzi Hero 7 rig on the front of my uh, showy Neotech 2 helmet here uh, today and I'll be going out and doing a couple of test rides and playing with video settings and all that. So anyway, let's get to the uh, the overall size. This is an identical rig uh, from what I normally carry on the front of the helmet. Uh, it's the Ulanzi vlogging case that holds the uh, audio adapter uh, tandem inside uh, the same housing so you don't have to strap it to the side of the helmet or whatever. So this is the, uh, the kit uh, that lives on there. Uh, overall weight uh, between the two isn't as significant as it looks like it would be. That looks like it would be much heavier, but it's not. Uh, so I've got my scale set in grams here. I hope you can see it. Let's move it around. I'll do a little fancy zooming in the uh, uh, post editing. But we're looking at 163 grams uh, for the full set, uh, including the audio adapter here for that versus the Hero 11 with the media mod attached to it and a battery in both of them, of course. And we're looking at 206 grams total. Uh, the little wind shield here isn't totally necessary because I'm not going to be using those mics, uh, but it only weighs about a gram, gram and a half. So the 
Hero 11 and the media mod weigh in at 204 mm -hmm. without that. So let's look at the overall size. Uh, we have, let's go to the edge of the microphone. And we're looking at about 95 millimeters, roughly 93 millimeters, three and a half inches, just over. Uh, and then height wise for the body, let's go this way. Height wise for the body is just over two and a quarter inches or 58 millimeters roughly. This is not precision work here, people. <laughs> uh, and then we'll go the widest portion from the edge of the lens cover uh, to the back of the media mod. And that is right at an inch and a half or 30, let's see if I can get that to hold still and quit scooting around, 38 millimeters roughly, 37, something like that. So that's that. Uh, the original kit that I've been using, the Ulanzi, I can't set it on its end the same way, but we'll, uh, we'll go to the widest points. We're only looking at two and three quarter inches wide, which is roughly 70 centimeters, not including the the USB plug. Uh, that would make it considerably wider, about three and a half inches. Uh, top to bottom is two and three quarter inches or a little over 70 millimeters. Uh, and then the width, trying to figure out the best way I can, yeah, I can get it that way. Width from front to back, uh, all the way to the edge of the uh, lens is just a little under one and three quarter inches or 44, 45 millimeters. So the weight differences aren't as significant as they would appear, uh, you know, 162, 163 versus... 204, 205 grams, something like that. Uh, it just, it looks heftier because it's so wide. So I'm going to take this out today. I'm going to duplicate the, the settings that I normally use on my Hero 7 rigs. Uh, I'm not going to be recording in full frame, which this can do. Uh, I will record in uh, uh, 4K, but it'll be 38, 40, 2160. Uh, and I'll duplicate the frame rates and everything to try to give me uh, an apples to apples comparison between the two. Uh, and I'll throw that into my editing software and see how it looks. Uh, so the goal of this exercise is I want to see how it looks and feels on the helmet. Uh, it's a little bit bulkier, obviously. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'll, I'll see how it works and then uh, uh, try to get my video settings right for my next trips. And for everyone that's inquired about my uh, vlogging setup and my helmet setup, uh, my Schuberth C3 Pro was set up a little bit differently with a... Uh, Motor Rad's chin mount uh, right here in this section holding the camera, uh, but the Motor Rad's blocks my modular uh, flip up, the little lever here on this helmet. So I went with a side mount, uh, and I'll link this product uh, in the video description below. Uh, it's it's all aluminum. It's not plastic, so it when you clamp it down, it's really solid. It doesn't move around or flex like the plastic ones do. Uh, and then that's attached to the helmet with uh, 3M VHB tape. It's real strong. Um, so anyway, uh, with the old 7 media mod and the, or the, uh, you know, the Ulanzi vlogging case and the, the microphone adapter, I had to use a zip tie here to make sure that the microphone was always plugged into the adapter because it had a tendency to kind of walk its way out. So I'm going to pull that loose here real quick and... Uh, unhook my microphone there's the microphone uh, and that's my handy dandy uh, cardo mic that has served me so well uh, through the last few years let's see if i can undo the little thumb screw here and we will remove the ulanzi case and see how i'm going to mount up my uh, Fancy new Hero 11 with the media mod. Should just be a plug and go affair. Trying to do this for the benefit of the camera instead of turning it where I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, I've adjusted this mount to get it, get the camera as centered as possible, uh, you know, to where it's dead center. I always hate these side. Uh, camera mounts where the camera is sitting over here next to somebody's face and you're not getting a, a centered up POV view. It just, I don't know, it doesn't look quite right to me. So I always uh, strive to have this thing centered up. And now because this camera is much wider, I'm going to have to move the, the mount kind of out and over a little bit to get it centered up. But 
I think this will work for uh, today's tests. Uh, it'll just be a little bit offset uh, from my normal view. Uh, so I'll get that thumb screw tightened up. Uh, that's another problem I'm already seeing is you can't reach the thumb screw because of the media mod uh, width here. Uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, everybody. Well, I've already found a huge logistical challenge here with using the uh, media mod and the, you know, the Hero 10 or 11 as a vlogging camera on a helmet. Uh, this is a ginormous pain in the butt. Um, my normal change routine uh, for these with the Ulanzi case was I just simply tilt the camera forward, pop this out, remove this, slide the camera out. And it's not a quick process, but it wasn't hard. Uh, and then I can access my cards right here. I can pop this out and uh, throw it into the editing station, you know, just, just pull the SD card out. Unfortunately, the way that this media mod is set up is uh, you have a bit of a problem. Uh, the mounts on the camera are on the camera. They're not on the media mod. And the uh, SD cards and all your stuff are over here on this side. So you have to remove the camera to get your card out of there. Uh, and that means unhooking everything, the media mod, everything, because all of it is on this end. It's not on the easy side of the world, which would be this side. If they had put the card over here to where it were more easily accessible, it would just make so much more sense. So as a vlogging camera, this thing is going to be a pain in the ass. Um, I guess what I'm going to have to revert to in the future is taking my entire helmet upstairs to the editing rig uh, and plugging in the uh, cable here. The there's a, a USB-C pass-through right here. You guys probably can't see it from your angle. I do apologize for the lighting. I wasn't prepared to go this deep this morning. Uh, so I can plug in a the cable here and just offload directly from the card instead of pulling the camera off of the helmet. Uh, however, that also means that's how I need to change my battery every single stinking freaking time. That sucks. That's an absolute disaster for a vlogging camera. I mean, there's way too much rework going on here to uh, get in there and change batteries, change SD cards, any of that. That's uh, that's a huge, huge fail compared to the uh, Hero 7. It was so much easier uh, because everything was on the opposite side or, you know, on the bottom rather. To, uh, and it's just much easier to remove because the mount wasn't integral to the camera. Uh, yeah, so as a vlogging camera, I'm already seeing some huge downfalls. Hopefully the video... Uh, quality and everything else will uh, offset it because this is going to suck. Okay, so here's the skinny on how to change out or remove the media mod so you can change your battery and your SD card and all that. So you have to unmount it from whatever it's mounted to in order to fold in the ears on the bottom, the mounting ears. Then you got to pull open the uh, media mod case on the side and separate the camera from the housing. Ugh. And it won't come out, obviously, if these fingers are extended because they get trapped in this port down here. The, so, I don't know. Maybe they could have redesigned this latch and left it open to where you could slide the housing off of the camera without unmounting the camera. So I don't know. That's, that's kind of a fail, in my opinion. So here's your battery. Uh, this battery's been in there for testing for the last few days, so I'm going to pull it out. Obviously, I don't want to hook up a big... Uh, battery to the side of my helmet. So anyway, uh, SD card is here. Uh, so if you want to pull it out for direct loading in your editing station, then obviously you got to go through all this nonsense in order to get that card out of there. Uh, yes, I know you can do it wirelessly and other things, but it's much slower. Uh, and if you do it wirelessly, obviously you're transferring to your phone. And then from your phone, you would have to go to your editing station or whatever. Yeah, seeing some big uh, shortfalls in this design here. So anyway, new battery, plug it all back together, make sure the USB-C gets lined up, click it shut. So now I've got to put it back on the mount, uh, on the helmet, get everything lined up, plug in the mic, do all that. It just, yeah, this just seems to be kind of a kludgy idea here. Okay, so I'm already seeing several serious design faux pas here. You know me, I'm pretty particular about my equipment. Um, the thumb screws that they include with uh, the GoPro uh, media mount aren't long enough for the, you know, the ones that come with the camera. They're not long enough. Look at this. As I'm screwing this in, it's cocking the, the housing sideways because it doesn't clear this relief in the bottom. 
So you're going to have to get some extra long thumb screws uh, in addition to your media mod and everything else if you want to mount this on any anything. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's a helmet mount or what, because once you get the uh, the thumb screw totally seated in, it's butting up against this recess right here and actually creating pressure uh, and torquing the camera sideways as the little knurlings butt up against this uh, chamfer here. Bad design, man. So you're going to have to have an extra long thumb screw that's like an inch longer in order to be out here where you can actually get your fingers on it to begin with. Man, this is messed up. So I'll go digging in my boxes and see if I've got any extra long thumb screws from other camera mounts. Man, bad idea. Bad design. Because uh, it doesn't matter. Any of their standard length thumb screws are all going to start interfering with this uh, chamfer on the housing right there as you tighten it up. Bad design. Bad design. And before some of you start saying, well, just put the screw in from the other side. No, can't do that. It's not designed for that. That's what this chamfer is for. If you try to go in from the other side, you're immediately cocked sideways. You can see it's it, it doesn't even make it all the way in before the, the screw starts interfering with the case. So yeah, this is just a, this is a design fail. I can't believe GoPro would have uh, let that slip by their engineering. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can already see where it's scratching and scuffing the bottom of the plastic housing here. That's from the, the knurlings on the, or not the knurlings, but the square. See, I can't even rotate it. If I set it all the way flush, it won't rotate because it's interfering. Hello? Oh, man. That's garbage. Okay. So I'll obviously need to modify my normal workflow. Uh, what I typically do is I pull the camera out of the uh, Ulanzi housing pop the bottom cover open, grab the SD card, and then bring it up here to my editing station and plug it into my SD reader and just offload straight. Uh, but now with this new media mod configuration, there's no way that I can get that off of there easily, reliably. So uh, it's going to be bringing it upstairs, plugging it into the uh, back of the media mod with a USB-C cable and offloading direct. So that still leaves the problem of the uh, on the road stuff. Uh, when I'm needing to swap batteries quickly or whatever, there's no quickly with this. <laughs> you you got to totally unmount the camera and pull it out of the media mod to access the battery, which is on the other side. Same thing goes with the SD card. So I guess my only options there are to carry a, uh, a USB pack and just do pass through uh, on the USB C here or something else. So. That means I'm going to have to find another, uh, you know, slim battery pack or something that I can put over here, maybe on this section of the helmet, uh, and then a suitably long uh, USB-C cable that, you know, will kind of go up and down with the chin bar. So I'll have to affix the cable here and then have the USB portion, you know, top of the battery pack kind of facing the hinge. I don't know. It's going to be a... A pain in the butt because <laughs> most of my video formats uh, are pretty long for ride videos. That way I can capture as much as I want and then cut out the slack in uh, post. So uh, it's going to make uh, some changes in my workflow, obviously. We'll see how it goes.